but uh, I'll just introduce him this way. The next U.S. Senator from the state of Texas. You know, Congressman Burgess has been a terrific voice in Congress for, in particular, the impact of Obamacare on our health care. How many of us, when you have a challenging health issue in your family, either with you or a loved one, your mom or your dad, how many of you want to go and sit down with your doctor and, and your friendly neighborhood government bureaucrat? <laughs> and discuss the proper treatment for your loved one. I'll tell you, when Congressman Burgess courageously endorsed me in this campaign, what he shared with me, if I can share, he said, listen, I'm so frustrated. There's so many people up here in Washington, so many Republicans in Washington, who won't stand for anything. That's why y'all are here. And Senator Santorum, what a brave, resolute patriot. I've seen in politics is inspirational as what Senator Santorum did this year in the presidential race. When he started in Iowa, he went from one town hall to another, to another, to another, from one coffee shop, from one VFW hall, and he went to the people. I remember him saying he went to one town hall that had six people. Six people, less than, less than one table. And you know, 
When you're running for president, you go to an event and six people show up. The kind men and women in the media are not so kind to you. <laughs> and it was an incredible testament. There were gazillions of dollars spent on the other side. And Senator Santora went one after the other after the other to listen to the people and say, look, at the end of the day, y'all are making this decision. And it was an extraordinary testament to principle and the commitment to the understanding that we the people are the ones responsible for every election in this country. But I'll tell you who I want to thank more than anyone who walked on this stage. Is each and every one of you. When we started this campaign a year and a half ago, Laura, you remember, there wasn't a soul in the state of Texas that thought we had a prayer. We were at 2% in the polls, and the margin of error was 3%. <laughs> Holly, that, that means technically, we could have been at negative 1%. <laughs> It might well have been the case that 1% of Texas voters would go in at that point and write in on the polls, not Cruz. <laughs> and what has happened has been extraordinary. It has been a testament to conservatives across Texas. It has been a testament to the men and women who came out here today on a hot July Texas day because we love our nation. And we're going to stand up and use it. Now, I want to make two points to you today. Number one, the stakes have never been higher. And number two, the grassroots, we the people, will decide this election. The stakes have never been higher. Our nation is in crisis. The national debt is larger than the gross domestic product. You know, in many ways, we are very, very fortunate right now because we have foreshadowing playing out in front of us. We can look across the Atlantic at what's happening in Greece and Italy and much of Europe, and that is the path we are headed down if we don't stand up and stop. As Margaret Thatcher said, the problem with socialism is eventually you run out of other people's money. And let me tell you, you know, it, it is so easy to watch TV, to read the newspapers, and to be demoralized. To be let down about where our country is going. If you hear nothing else today, Hear this. I am here with a word of encouragement and exhortation. There is a great awakening that is sweeping this state and sweeping this nation. Everywhere you go, there are millions of Texans, millions of Americans standing up saying, enough! We can't keep doing what we've been doing. One of the oldest definitions of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. And let me tell you, it is incredible when you travel the state and you see the passion of men and women who are willing to do anything to take our country back. You know, at the end of the day, it ain't rocket science. What do we need to do? Stop spending money.
If any one of us ran our businesses or our homes the way the federal government is running, we'd be bankrupt. We'd be sleeping under a bridge. And that's why the American people are standing up and they're saying, enough already. Turn it around. Stop spending money we don't have. And get back to our Constitution. How many small business owners are here? Now, the president doesn't think you built your business. And you know, just a few weeks earlier, the president shared his thoughts that the private sector is doing just fine. It's government that needs more help. You know, the oldest, old definition of a gaffe is when a politician in Washington tells you what he really thinks. <laughs> what is so scary about those two statements is our president believes every word of And if you think about it, if you were sitting down to write a Saturday Night, Night Live skit, <laughs> about a clueless, out-of-touch socialist. Those are the lines you write. I mean, that's what you say. How do you even make fun of this anymore? That's what we're facing. Listen, only one thing has ever created a job in the private sector, and that is entrepreneurs putting capital at risk to meet our needs. I grew up as the son of two small business owners in Houston. My first job, Mona, was when I was eight. My dad hired me for a dollar an hour as a computer operator at a seismic data processing company in the oil and gas company. And he used to have me, see all of y'all who got to know my dad, you think of him as this sweet, nice man, he's a pastor. Well, he used to have his eight-year-old son work a double shift on Thanksgiving and Christmas Day. Now, he was nice about it. He'd bring me a plate of turkey and stuffing and, and cranberry. And then he'd say, get back to work. It was a small business, and he wasn't willing to shut the company down. And every one of you who has small businesses understands exactly what that is. And right now, unfortunately, the federal government has a boot on the back of the neck of small businesses all across this country. So we've got to stand up and stop it. We've got to stand up and repeal Obamacare. <laughs> and we've got to stop this abuse of executive authority more czars in the White House than we ever had in Russia. How many of y'all are familiar with the lizard out in West Texas? You know, the Obama administration was trying to use the presence of this little bitty lizard to shut down oil and gas production in Texas. I'll tell you my views of a lizard. They make darn fine boots. Our land commissioner was fond of saying we had a reptile dysfunction. <laughs> <sighs> we gotta stand up and take the country back. And that's what's happening. That is what is happening. And that leads to the second point I want to say. This race is going to be decided by the grassroots. You know, the other side doesn't think the grassroots matter. They think they can just write a ginormous check. You know, at this point, my opponent has put $24.5 million of his own personal fortune into flooding the airwaves with false, nasty attack ads all aimed at me. You know, my wife, Heidi, she saw one of these ads and she went, my goodness, 
I didn't know you were such a rotten person. <laughs> and our two little girls, Caroline and Catherine, and Caroline's four, Catherine's one, they were both astonished to discover they were secretly Chinese. <laughs> Everything that money can buy will be aimed at us in the next three days. And yet, I'll tell you, given the choice between a pile of gold or standing with the grassroots conservatives of the state of Texas, it ain't even close to where I'd rather be. We have 72 hours. This whole race, this long, long journey that so many of you have been with us for months after months after months, it all comes down to the next 72 hours. To use a football analogy, and one that I think Senator Santorum will, will like, we're on the two yard line. It's the very end of the game. We have marched the entire length of the field. We started out deep in our own end zone. Heck, we started out in the hot dog stand. <laughs> and the other side has recruited the 1978 Pittsburgh Steelers <laughs> to defend the goal line. Now, I have to tell you, I said that for the first time about a week ago. And someone called out and said, that's great, they're all old men. <laughs> but this is the whole fight. It's the next 72 hours. I want to ask, how many people here have early voted? <laughs> that is fantastic. I want to ask each and every one of you to vote again for me. <laughs> Ten more times. Now, what am I saying? We are not Democrats. But every one of you can vote again ten more times. Between now and Tuesday, if each and every one of you will take it as your personal commitment to find ten people to show up at the polls. If every one of you will get on the phone, call your friends, call your neighbors, call everyone you know, and say, listen, this race matters, and I know this guy. Please take 10 minutes on Tuesday, go down to the polls, and pull the lever for two. That is the power of the grassroots. If everyone here gets 10 people, that will have an enormous impact on this race. We have sign-up sheets by the door. We've got a 72-hour strike squad that is phone banking, that is block walking, that is working night and day. I ask for every moment you can give because the whole fight is these next 72 hours. And if we stand together, if conservatives show up to vote on July 31st, we are going to win this race. I want to close with talking a little bit about why every one of us is here. We could be home with our families. We could be watching the Olympics. We could be doing any of a thousand things other than coming out in the heat to get involved. But I'll tell you for me, I mentioned our little girls, Caroline and Kathy. I do not want to look those girls in the eyes in 20 years and tell them they have inherited a country that is bankrupt. 
that is crushed with crippling debt because their parents and grandparents, we were too irresponsible to live within our means. For the last four centuries, every generation in America has given to the next generation a brighter future, greater opportunity, and greater prosperity. We are on the verge of being the first generation in the history of this nation to give to our kids and grandkids a bleaker future less opportunity, and less prosperity. And I'll tell you as a dad, that is utterly and completely unacceptable to me, and I know it is unacceptable to each and every one of you. That's why we're here. That's what the stakes are. Our nation is at the edge of a cliff if we keep spending like we've been spending, if we keep eroding the Constitution and stripping away our liberties, our kids and grandkids will have nothing left. But I will tell you, Texans have a special tradition when liberty is threatened. We rise to the occasion. In 1835, the city of Gonzales. General Santa Ana issued an order to the Texans, give me your guns and hand over the cannon that guards the city. Come on, the <laughs> That's what it means to be a Texan. And that's what we're doing here today. We are standing up and saying, come and take it. We will take our country back. We are doing it side by side. This is Texas. This is conservatives standing up and saying, liberty matters. And we will together restore that shining city on the hill that is the United States of America. God bless.